Listen closely. You want to hear? Oh, really? Oh, See, my, parents, my parents never gave me the sex talk. Okay. So why don't you give me the sex talk? I, I really, me. I feel uncomfortable right now. Oh. Why do you want to know the sex talk from a 15-year-old boy? That's pretty weird. <laughs> Let's talk about the album. Okay, what's going on with your new album? <laughs> Things on blast, you know. You want to say it again? You have beautiful lips. Oh, thank you, man. Thank <laughs> it's you, like bro. Fucking good lips. Thank wow. you, bro. Wait, just wear pies. Yeah, serious. Right. Harry, who apparently wanted to know what a Bieber butt felt like. The year award at the American Music Awards and managed to shock the teenage pop superstar. She presented with Luke Bryan and before Bieber took kisses on the neck and a butt grab. Backstage, McCarthy joked about what Bieber jokingly called violating. I, I did grab his butt. I'm single. But I think that's cougar rape. I did grab his butt. I'm single. But I think that's cougar rape. So was the butt grab spontaneous? Well, it better be. Because that's just weird if it isn't. Um, yeah, you know, I gave him a kiss and there was a lot of lipstick and then my partner Luke decided to wipe it off and I was like, no, so I did that for a reason. So you remember me. So then I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't help it. He was just so delicious. So little, just, I want to tear his head off and eat it. Wow. I feel violated right now. Wow. There's a spotlight on Diddy as allegations surface. A Twitter user shared a clip of a young Justin Bieber dancing with Diddy at a party, with Diana Wallace Shawn amplifying it. In the footage, Bieber appears to receive a drink containing alcohol. Speculation arises that Bieber might have been underage at the time, raising questions of sexual harassment, predatory behavior, and exploitation. Commenters debate whether enough concern was shown for Bieber's well-being in this situation. This isn't just a one-off occurrence. Keep watching for more. I'm good. How are you? Right, young brother, everything's good. Everything's Selling right. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, really. ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But. You never really got my number, so. Right, okay. My number? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five, five. Man. Right now. Woo. Okay. Okay. All right, so so I'm going to be driving this yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, when you get 16, you come down there, you got to, you know, wear your seat. I mean, I'm 15. Thing. You could ride in the passenger seat. I got my permit. Now that, not yet. No. All right, no, 16. No, no, no. Slow All down. Right. Let's slow down, Josh. Okay. Let's slow down, okay? One step at a time. But yeah, yeah, the keys is yours when you, you know, when you get 16. You're All good right. to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. Right. And then when you get 18, you get the house. You okay. get the mansion. Okay. Yeah. I get the mansion? Yeah. All right. So where, where are we off to now? Where'd you like to go? Um, I mean, wherever you want to go. Check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy, um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed the Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, 
he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna? Let's just go get some girls. Let's go get some girls. A man after my heart. That's what I'm talking about. It's a bummer, but it seems like Justin isn't the only artist that Diddy took under his wing when they were young. To New York City, and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Camp? Yeah, Flavor Camp? Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... And it was <laughs> about I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All you know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and what kind of, do you have money? What's <laughs> going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. Reggie Wright keeps pointing fingers at Diddy, claiming he's a predator in relation to what went down with those two. That um, they see the, they see these sparse potentials in them, and they want and a parent would do anything to blow their kids up. Aaliyah mother settled for publishing rights for allowing R. Kelly to do what he did to Aaliyah. Janet Jackson family did it. With the guy from, I uh, can't think of his name right now, but I think it was the group called Shalom- Shalomor or something like that. Did it with their family. She got her sister raising a kid, <laughs> thinking that she's the mama. Yeah, I'll get too deep for y'all. But, those situations has been happening. Or if it does happen to my kid, at least we'll be rich. And that's what happens sometimes uh, with the guys and you don't know, but there's some good situations out there that has happened as well with, with kids in my mind. You know, the, uh, the Bow Wow situation. Bow Wow was never a victim around Death Row, Snooper or or Suge, or none of them ever messed with, uh, you know, with Bow Wow while he was a, a, a kid growing up trying to be in the, in the business. Uh, we haven't heard any situations like that with Brandy, to my knowledge. She was a young kid. But they're, they're, even though Brandy Mama was always, always, you know, in her life and all of that. But my point is, people allow them to be around people for that opportunity to blow up. Look at the girl, uh, which is funny. I, uh, even though we can't believe a word she says, your favorite girl, that, that chick that you think is so fine that was with Aaron Hall, what's her name? Gloria something? Oh, Gloria Velez? Yeah, she calling out your boy Gene. <laughs> she been calling him out telling him he's lying. But you know, so there, there, there's situations like that. that that's happened, that happened a lot back in the 90s and you know, even until today in my my situation. I mean, in my opinion, but I couldn't do it. I would have to be around my child every day, but people has done it and it's all behind that dollar dollar bill, y'all. That dollar dollar bill, that green. And uh, some people sell their soul.
Usher's story really tugs at the heartstrings because he doesn't seem ready to share what really went down. Looking at this lawsuit, right, Luteron, he alleges that, you know, Diddy told him personally that he had sex with Usher. And when you look at the lawsuit, even though they got Usher name redacted, you could tell who it is because they described him as the guy that performed at the Super Bowl. Right. So, I mean, we all know who that is, but how you feel about that, man? Well, I, I mentioned that earlier that he said about Stevie J. The Usher part, that that's a touchy situation, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a certain feeling and I, I felt a certain way when Usher got on Shay Shay and I don't mean to mention other people platforms, but he got on Shay Shay and he mentioned how great and how good Puff taught him and everything. You know what I'm saying? About the business, right? I know and people know that was around that in that time that Puff and Usher did have that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know, I know. Let me, re let, let me reframe you on something. Remember Usher, we was at the Swiss hotel. Puff was, had Kim in the room, had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the, in, in the, uh, the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you taking up for somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right when you was at Diddy camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy camp? Remember, he was on um, one of the talk shows, the white guy with the curly hair, what's his name? Um, the white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy Camp? And Usher said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy Camp. But yet and still you praise him. Damn, man, and you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that um, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mom explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. Did he suppose behind the scenes influence and his wide reaching network have had a significant impact on making a lot of this happen? She saw no way out other than doing what she told her to do. She had, he had mentally controlled her. He, he it's like a pimp. Did he have pimp potential? He had her mind messed up where it controlled her. She felt no way out. She felt like if she walked out the door, he wasn't gonna do the music no more. If she went somewhere or she ran and didn't wanna do that, their relationship not only would have been over, he would have painted a picture that nobody else in the industry would have dealt with her. Like he did Wendy Williams. He said it when he was in Cali. When I come back to New York and that B-I-T-C-H is on the radio. This is Wendy Williams, the hottest radio host 
in New York City, when she put out those pictures of the dude pulling his pants down and it looked like some gay act that was going on, he got on the phone. He said, let me tell you this. When I get back to New York City, if she's on the radio station, he's talking to a radio executive. He said the same thing. To she, he said, nobody that I deal with, nobody that I know is going to do anything with y'all. No business at all. It ain't going to be no artists, no nothing. Gonna come. He's telling people that at a radio station. When we got back to New York City, Wendy Williams was in Philly <laughs> at a new station. Wow. Justin Bieber shared some intimate struggles, recounting how his bodyguards would secretly check on him at night, highlighting his inner emptiness despite his fame. He bravely acknowledged battling sadness and pain, resorting to drugs as a coping mechanism to dull his emotions and persevere. These challenges manifested in legal troubles and erratic behavior in leg. Bieber also criticized industry figures exploiting vulnerabilities, drawing parallels to Diddy's reputation. Cassie, she claims that, you know, she hid out at a friend house in Florida after, you know, Diddy put hands on her. And she said that she was tracked down by a guy named James Cruz, the president of Bad Boy Management. You know anything about that? James Cruz and Har Pierre always been Diddy's flunkies especially Har Pierre. That's why he's being sued right now, too, by one of his assistants and stuff like that, because I guess he learned from his boss. But James Cruz used to work for 50, but he worked for Diddy first. So them niggas was always scumbuckets, man. Look at Harvey Pierre. How do you feel about him getting accused of sexual assault? Uh... Like I said, anything that has to do with those sexual assaults, those people have to prove that. But is it, are they capable? Yeah, they're capable. Look at the atmosphere. They in the music industry, they in the music business. They set up those type of, uh, uh, they, they learn the tricks of the trade. For instance, guys don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. Most of those girls, especially if they like mixed drinks, you understand, they see the bottles when they open them and they trying to keep their eyes on because they don't want to get no kind of drugs. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. They didn't put the pills and the stuff in there, the roofies, the ecstasy, the ease, all. Picture being a young, ambitious individual bursting with lofty aspirations, only to feel the weight of the world slowly extinguishing those dreams, morphing you into someone unrecognizable. One day, you wake up to find your relationship strained, happiness slipping away. Despite achieving success, doubt seeps in, leaving an empty ache behind. Bieber, too, has shared moments craving normalcy amidst his fame, like when he and a friend hid his passport just to escape his hectic schedule. It's a sharp contrast from the glitzy exterior, revealing a desire for simplicity. Jaguar Wright's personal stories shine a light on concerning patterns within the industry, raising questions about its culture. Who fucks transgenders that we don't know about? Like, who would they be surprised to hear? I.e. I, I. Lovely British gentleman. I don't even know if he know. Oh, okay. I caught those initials. Oh my God. I don't even know if he know. Because she's good. I don't think they caught. Wait, wait. Yeah. He's been seen with her twice, though. 
once in London and once in New York. What? And she's stunning. She post op. She got a fake coochie. You know what? Speaking of that, when uh, Kevin Gates was, he was having sex with this white transgender. Yeah. And he, he didn't even know to he because he was eating her out. And then he said, "Hey, are you trans?" And she said, "Yes." And he went back to eating her out. So. This here's my question. I got a question. There was another uh transgender on Twitter. I think I can't remember her name, but she was exposing all those Miami football yeah. players. Listen okay. to me. When I first saw how Trey Songs was moving around. Oh. Especially in Miami. And it trips me out because I would remember watching him come out of, you know, one of my young boys cribs. Cause he would come down there and go to Star Island. And then he would, you know, get the Maserati so he could, you know what I mean? Flex around Biscayne Bay and Ocean Drive, you know, like all the little mini celebrities do. But then he would go and he would fuck off on my young boy and let my young boy use the Maserati. Mm. And, so when I think about that, and then I think about that really disturbing footage of Bieber, Odell Beckham, and Trey Songz. Yes. Like, and, and Trey's like literally sitting there playing lookout. Playing lookout as Justin Bieber goes down on Odell. The boy came up with his mouth wet. Mouth wet. What? Dribbling. Now, what they're going to try to say is, no, nah, Justin Bieber was just doing a line of coke. No, he didn't mess with his nose when he, he came up. He was doing a line of coke with his mouth. According to XXL Shadity.com, Diddy's legal team made a move in a New York court on April 26. They filed a motion seeking the dismissal of specific allegations raised by Joy Dickerson Neal concerning sexual assault against the founder of Bad Boy Entertainment. In their submission, Diddy's attorneys argued that Dickerson Neal's claims of revenge pornography and human trafficking should be dismissed with prejudice. They highlighted that the laws pertinent to these claims were not in force at the time of the purported assault in 1991. They clarified that the New York law addressing services for victims of human trafficking, referenced in her lawsuit, wasn't enacted until 27, well after the alleged incident. But his mouth! He wiped his mouth! When you do his mouth was wet. You do this when you finish your line. His you wipe your mouth when you suck his dick. That wasn't post nasal drip. That was seminal fluid. Chef. It was Odell Dick. But did he taught him well, right? The flavor freak off. Scooter Braun taught him well. Justin Bieber spent forty eight hours with Diddy. Talking about we about to get it in. I'm gonna let you drive the car when you 15. That boy ain't been the same since. Got all this anxiety. Face well, collapsed from all the dick he done stuff. Meek Mill said it's that expensive pay. Ooh. He would know. How many times Meek Mill done gave that ass up? A parent, listen to me, if he making songs about being expensive pain, in expensive pain, in his A's. Did you see him bunny hopping for those billionaires? No, Lord, Lord, I don't want to know. Look, they had him like this. <laughs> I told him four years ago, almost four years ago, I told him that boy was a victim. what I say? It right here with you. Motherfucking Charlie Mack took him to Will Smith house. He left that house fucking screaming. Then he ran over there to the fake Rick Ross. Fucking Rose fucking Zay. Pink Flowers. Sir, you want to be known as Pink Flowers. Somebody ought to pluck your petals. Now, 
He get down there to Miami, afraid to talk to niggas in Philly. Talking about everybody is sodomite. I'm like, that's not possible. Philadelphia is Muslim. It's Islam. Ain't a whole lot of that. You know that. Then I find out he's spending all this time on Diddy Bo with Khaled. Oh! And what I will say is, is this. Once I found out he was over there with Khaled, I already knew. If it, Cause he Khaled, he got a strong neck. You ever seen the way he eat a chicken wing? <laughs> Jay, he eat a lot to be fair. Next time that nigga eat on camera, I want you to look at the fingers and everything. He don't leave nothing. Similarly, they asserted that the New York City revenge porn law, cited in her claim against Diddy, wasn't implemented until December 2017, several years after the alleged occurrence. He could just be a fat nigga. <laughs> With a strong neck. Is so his, I knew is his big ass was power bottoming. I knew Meek was power bottoming. Wow. Well, he already done got the broke in. I just didn't know that that's why he was faking it with Nikki, so that he would have an excuse to be up underneath the dibbler. Because they, start, they started dressing the like Jag. You see that photo where they are? Yeah, just, just like how him and Mace used to. Oh, 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 oh. What you know about? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, to be fair, now, now wait, now wait. Now May said it was a big ass dildo in the bathroom, but May said it wasn't his. He was present with a large dildo. Well, he, he lived with Diddy at the time. Home. He said he was living with Diddy at the time. He was living with Diddy with a large dildo in the and Shaggy is the best he can do. Nigga, you was dressed up in the matching clothes too. The Diddy do I bop? Rodney done already said. Why ain't you got no stories about all that pressure if ain't nothing happened? Mm. You know, I feel the same way about Gil. You know, Gilly, they, they talking about Gil gatekeeping. He got Wallow running around off the chain, running around telling motherfuckers that they talked to Jag while their careers was over and shit. And I'm trying to figure out how the fuck you think you was the only underage motherfucker working down there under age 21 ain't get fucked over by Birdman because Birdman touched on everybody. 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 Furthermore, Diddy's legal counsel contended that Dickerson Neal could not sue Bad Boy Entertainment or Combs Entertainment, both named as defendants, because these entities did not exist at the time of the alleged assault, and retroactive application of a statute is not permissible. You should have looked at this photo, right? Check out this photo where Diddy with a medical rapper on his wrist. Was this after the fight he had with Kim Porter? Yeah, that's the same time, man. <laughs> Same hand, right hand. If you look at it, it's on his his right wrist, right up in there. Kim hit like it, it. It it almost severed the artery. He was yo. He was ble He was bleeding like crazy, and yo. That's the reason, and that's when that opioid crisis came out. That's the reason I knew that shit was serious, because. That's what got Puff hooked on drugs. Wow, yeah, I got this from a photographer. He said that he took this in 1996 at a 112 video shoot. But for the people that don't know the story, right, let the people know what led to, you know, Kim Porter slashing Puffy Risk with a car screw. Right. Well, I was off that weekend because I usually have Puff on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Friday after work, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, he was staying with Kim the whole weekend, so he said he wasn't going out. He wasn't going to do anything. So I said, cool. He told me I was off. 
So now um, I get a call. It's on a Saturday. And uh, it's from Kirk Burroughs and Paul. They're like, yo, Gene, Puff is by himself over at St. Luke's Hospital. I was like, yeah, what happened? You say, yo, they say, yo, Gene, you got to get over there because ain't nobody, you know, nobody there with him. Blase, this, this, that, and the third. So I rush over to St. Luke's Hospital. I see Kim, she, uh, they in the emergency room. Um, flash my badge. I go up in there. I ask them what room we in. They, they let me know. So boom. Um, I see Kim. Kim is, she's in distress. And you could tell that by her arms being folded, she was, she was like, if I, if, if I, if I'm describing it, she was, she was in distress herself, whereas that she could have been in pain. She could have been hurting because I did see a bruise on her face and I seen bruises on her arm. In November 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal took legal action against Diddy and his enterprises, alleging sexual assault and the covert recording of an incident dating back to her college days in 1991, when she was 19. It was on her arm. I seen bruises on her arm and on her hand. And then Puff was sitting in the chair and with the thing wrapped around his arm, telling Kim that this is how I make my living. You, you could, you could, what you call my living. You could mess up my whole living. She was trying, he was trying to make her feel bad. So I was like, what the F is happening? So I'm just listening to the dialogue between them two. And he's sitting up there blaming her. And then she was like, yo, I told you to stop. And then she, she wouldn't say it. She said, I told you to stop. You wouldn't stop. So then the nurses came in there. He had to have, you know, some kind of surgery and everything like that. And uh, that was it. It was from them fighting. Kim said, Kim said, because I asked her, I, Kim said that he wouldn't stop hitting me and I grabbed the court screw and, and made a mistake and caught him on the wrist. It's a hell of a mistake, Kim. <laughs> so that's what happened. Wow, and you said that's what got him hooked on drugs. That's what got him hooked. That was guy. He couldn't get off those. He couldn't get off those pills. Man, we used to have this. We used to meet this little. Well, he used to meet this little white guy that he would give Puff a bottle of pills like this, like once, like every three to three to five days. You know what I'm saying? Every three to five days, uh, they would have a pill bottle like this for fifteen hundred dollars. And this little white kid, whatever Puff called him, he was that with him. I don't know where he was getting him from. Maybe his father, he worked at a pharmacy. His father was a, a doctor or whatever. But this was way before that crisis came in. These was, uh, uh, what they call them? Uh, not Tylenol or codeine, but these were straight, I think codeine or um, opioids or some shit like that. In her extensive 22-page lawsuit, Neil recounted a dinner encounter with Diddy on January 3, 1991, at a Harlem restaurant. She asserted that during the meal, Diddy deliberately drugged her, leading to her loss of consciousness. Following this, Neil claimed that Diddy transported her to his location where she was subjected to sexual assault. Furthermore, she alleged that Diddy clandestinely recorded the assault and distributed the video within the music industry. They got a documentary about Diddy on Tubi, and it's pretty good, man. And Aubrey O'Day, she made a comment on there that caught my attention. She said that the only reason why Diddy gave back, you know, bad boy artists back they publishing was to silence them. Well, you got to realize is that Cassie put her lawsuit in way back then six months prior to all this stuff that we knew about. They went to they went to sit down with their lawyers and everything like that. So now, he used that as a ploy. Okay, I'm going to give y'all y'all publishing back, but y'all got to sign this NDA, you know, non-disclosure. 
Y'all can't talk about nothing about bad boy. Y'all can't talk about me. Y'all can't talk about nothing I did or uh, Janice Cohn publishing, uh, was Justin publishing or whatever he got his company's name in or Sony Universal. None of that. He did that for a reason. He did that to shut them up. But then he went on this whole hiatus that, okay, I'm doing this to give back because this is the right thing to do. No, you did that because you didn't want those people to come out on you. And now, if they do, you take that publishing back that you gave them, which was, okay, they say it's worth something. It's worth something, but it ain't worth what it used to be. Yeah, she also said in this documentary that, you know, some people are worried that, you know, if Diddy, if he make it through this, he might retaliate and do something to him. I don't I don't care about that. I don't think about that. And I'm never afraid of no man. You understand? And if she said that that's her own opinion, what I do know is this, is that he will never be what he was back when Big was alive and when Mace them and they did that whole Bad Boy for Life tour. He would never be that individual known like that again. And that's fine with me. I don't care if he ever do it a day in jail. You understand? That's not for me. But I know for a fact he will never ever be what he once was based on what we know about him now. And I'm fine with that. I mean, for you, you've been speaking on Diddy since the early 2000s. So, I mean, if he was going to do something to you, he would have been did it. So I'm sure he ain't going to do nothing to you. So, Well, I, I, I wouldn't say that. You know, I wouldn't say that. But my head is always on the swivel. You understand? Every time I step my foot out of my house, I don't take nothing for granted. You know, I, I I don't judge a man by his size. I never have. I never will. I don't judge a man by the color of his skin. You understand? I judge a man by his character, how he come at me. No matter what size he is. So me is different because people look at me as being the catalyst of giving people the courage to come out and speak on it. And that's more dangerous than somebody. Diddy vehemently refuted these allegations, accusing Neil of exploiting New York law for financial motives. Nevertheless, he remains entangled in legal battles and repercussions stemming from other accusations, including those made by Cassie, Looking at this lawsuit, she alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll make her look online for BBCs for their freak-off sessions. And she say that, you know, in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he enjoyed watching her get smashed by BBCs. So, you know, what you think about that? Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? <laughs> Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have sex with her it's something fishy about that bro because you gotta realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the Diddy people was six months ago so some of that stuff was cut out okay we're gonna we're gonna give you this but you gotta cut this part out let's just say allegedly or just for the sake of it cassie wasn't the only one who wanted or she didn't want it but cassie who searched for the big black And she was searching for the big black, not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the room with her. <laughs> so you feel like Diddy was having sex with the male prostitutes? 
They had to be for both of them. They was in the room. Right? You're right. It's a freak off session. Right? She said it's a freak off session. If she says a freak off session, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. What do you think about Diddy's wrongdoing? Don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more.